G'day YouTube and welcome back to the ASX Portfolio channel. My name's Jonathan. So today we're gonna to be talking about calculating the Black Shoal Greeks using Python. Now, we're not going to be going into the complexities of Black Shoal um, theory and modeling here. This is just simply taking the formulas and putting them in Python. Now, a lot of you might criticize why on earth you could do that. Like, I mean, a lot of people are capable of uh, typing in formulas into Python and then actually going about calculating these values. Yes, this is for the people who are not confident in Python um, applying the formulas and just want to make sure that they're doing the right thing. So without further ado, let's jump in. So here, if you remember, we did a video called the implementation of Black Scholes formula in Python. We're going to be using that implementation of Black Scholes in this video. We're going to be confirming that we are getting the correct values by using pyvollib library. So pip install pyvollib if you haven't, and we're gonna take the following modules. So from pyvollib, we're going to take the black shoals module and we're going to import black shoals as BS. Also, we're going to take from pyvollib.blackshoals.greeks.analytical. We're going to import delta, gamma, vega, theta, and rho. And again, we'll just be using these to confirm that we actually have got the correct values for our, uh, our Greeks. Excellent, so moving on, uh, this was the implementation of Black Shell's formula. If you don't have it, feel free to go to my website, link in the description, and copy and paste this. So for the Black Shoals now, we had we were returning our own price. What we'll do now is we'll compare this um, to the actual Black Shoals price. So just confirming the functionality at the moment, if we print the option price of this function, we'll get our option price back. Now, if we just check this with the Black Shoals function that they're getting, so Black Shoals, and we need to place the parameters. For them, the flag is first, so that's our type. Then it's um, the actual underlying, then it's the strike, then the time, tau, time remaining, then the rate, the interest rate, and sigma, the volatility. So this is the parameters and the order that they need to be in for these modules. So now if we print this, um, we'll get rid of the round. We should get a tuple back. We should get a tuple once we actually execute this function. We'll get a tuple of our solution and then their solution. So this is how we're going to compare that we actually get the right value. So what is delta? Delta is the rate of change of the theoretical option value with respect to the underlying. So the partial derivative here of the value of the option with respect to the change in the underlying S. So this is actually calculated differently for the call and the put, as you can see here. Um, this funny looking um, phi value right here is actually um, just the normal distribution, it's the cumulative distribution. When you see, um, so this is capital thi, when you see um, small thi, so it looks like this but with a slant on the end, that's actually just gonna be the PDF of the normal distribution. So keep that in mind, um, one, one with respect to the other. So here we've got D1, um, which is the exact same as the Black Shoals model. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna copy our function here for the black shoals because we're going to use this um, as we go down the page. So instead of black shoals, we'll call this delta and we're going to call it calc because we don't want to override the imported variables that we have coming in. So we're going to take in these exact same variables and what we're going to do, we're going to calculate delta of an option, European option. We'll just say option, it's easier. So we've got D1 and D2. Now, as you can see from the formulas, we only need D1 and it is gonna change for the call, so we still need this conditional if type C and if type B, P. So let's now just use the formula that we've got. 
So we've got normal cumulative distribution of D1 and we can get rid of all this and we'll copy and paste that down here. Maybe we'll change the variable to delta calc. So the delta that we're calculating and we'll return the price. Here, we're also gonna return their delta and remember that it's still the same type, S, K, T, R, Sigma. So they're all the variables that's required for the pi volt lib module. So now that we've got this, we've got our delta calc, let's just confirm that it's correct. So for the call, we've got only D1 centered around zero um, with a volatility of one. So yeah, just the standard normal distribution. And then here for a put, we actually need to take the negative of this value. Um, with negative D1. So that should handle delta calc for us. So still moving down the page, we're gonna talk about gamma. So again, we're going to copy the Black-Scholes formula. I'll probably keep this there. So gamma uh, measures the rate of change of delta with respect to the underlying price. So it's the second derivative of um, the value of the option with respect to the underlying. So what do we actually need for this? We still need D1. So we can call this gamma calc, still taking in all those variables, calculate gamma of a European option. We'll leave D2 there because it'll be nice to copy down later. So um, we've got the price, but we wanna call this gamma calc and this does not change now for a call or a put so what we're going to do is we'll just keep one of these so gamma calc is going to be equal to the norm so now this is no longer the normal distribution CDF this is the PDF for D1 so keep that in mind so norm.pdf now we're going to divide by S times by sigma times by NP square root. And I've got the symbol tau there, but here we're using T to represent that time until expiry. So that should be it for the gamma calc. We'll return that and we'll also return gamma from the pi vol lib module. Excellent. Now, um, we're going to encounter an issue here, but you'll see this when we print all the way down the screen. So let's, let's just continue. So we'll just return that for now. Go back up here, copy the black shoals. Should keep that on the clipboard probably. So now Vega. Vega is the measure of sensitivity to volatility, to changes in volatility. Um, so here we've just got the partial derivative of the change of um, the option price with respect to a change in the underlying volatility. Um, again, this does not change with respect to the put or the call. So we'll just keep them the same. So let's call this Vega. And please note that there is no um, Greek symbol for Vega. So what have I used here? Upsilon, <laughs> it looks like a V. So here we are going to be using the underlying multiplied by norm.pdf. So again, using the PDF, D1 centered around zero, so standard normal distribution, times by np dot square root, and that is going to be tau. So we'll return, uh, we'll return, sorry, Vega calc. Remember, we don't want to override our importing variables. So Vega calc, and we'll print out from our pi vol lib library. That looks good. Excellent. So now again, we have theta. Now this does have a change um, in formula between the call and the put. So we're going to have to use our Black-Scholes uh, function again, copy and paste. Now, theta is the measure of sensitivity of the value um, as time passes. So this is called time decay. 
So theta here is we're going to be using d1 and d2 um, for both the put and the call. So let's call this theta calc. Great. So for the call, it's going to be minus s um, by the normal distribution, but the PDF d1 multiplied by sigma divided by two times np dot square root of time. Make sure you have all these terms in brackets. That's pretty important. And we're going to minus r times r times k np dot exponential r minus t times by the normal distribution, cumulative distribution um, of d2. So that's all good there. So what we're going to do, we're going to copy that for the put, place it down here, and we only need to make two minor changes. Um, one is that this positive on the whole second term becomes, or this, t yeah, this term becomes positive. And um, here we need to make this d2 minus. So still the cumulative um, distribution function here and the PDF here. So let's return those values, theta calc, First, the module for pivol lib. Great, and again, you know, our exception function here probably isn't the best, um, but again, we're just trying to highlight that there's an error with these functions. So this was intentional um, for debugging specifically the value of the option. Probably a little bit irrelevant here, but we'll just leave it there. So now, moving on to row. Rho measures the sensitivity to the interest rate, so changes in the interest rate. Uh, funny looking P here, so we'll call that Rho calc. So for Rho calc, we're going to be taking only D2. So that's interesting, it's the first one um, with only D2. Let's take this second term. So we'll go K times T or tau times by the exponential, um, so minus r to the t, and then we will take the cumulative distribution of d2. So once we've got that right, we'll copy and paste that here, and we'll take for the put, minus that whole term, and then minus d2 here. Then we'll return those two values as rho calc and rho. Now, here's for the exciting part. So we've made our functions now um, for those five different things. We're gonna put it all together. I typed this out because I, I didn't wanna result in tedious typing out for these functions. So here we're just gonna return, obviously, the, t the two different tuples for each of these calculations, our calculations versus PyVol uh, Libs module calculations, and we're going to see the difference. Now. Theta calc, what have I spelt incorrectly there? Theta calc. What have I done? There, so I must have just spelt that incorrectly. So here you can see that for some of these values it's the same and some of them are different. So let's identify which ones they are. So the option price is the same, the delta is the same, the gamma is the same. Now, beta, theta, and rho are not, but we can kind of see something similar here. So let's think about these individually. Let's go up to vega. So for vega, this is a measure of the volatility. Now, as you can see, the volatility um, with respect to sigma here, I have as the unit one. So if you, change volat if you change the underlying by one, this is the partial differential equation that you're gonna get. However, in practice, we um, practitioners wanna use what is my sensitivity to a 1% change in volatility. So what um, pi vol lib has done is times this amount by 0 0.01, so taking 1% change. So we'll just create that new function here. Now, in a similar way of thinking, that's the same thing that's happened with rho. So rho is the percentage, um, the sensitivity with respect to the interest rate. Now, it's probably more meaningful to say what happens when we have a change of not 100% 
to the interest rate, but a 1% change. So again, that has been times by 0.1. Now for theta, this is with respect to time and, and we have time in years. Now that's not a very useful measure. Time decay is much better to look at as per day. So to do this, we're gonna take our number and divide it by 365. Cool. So now that we've made those slight adjustments, let's then check to see that these prices line up. And as you can see, for the call, for those particular variables are all the same as the pi vol lib module. And for a put, they're all the same. So hopefully you got a lot of value out of this video. If you did, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel because we're going to be posting more regularly from now on. I'm actually waiting for a whiteboard so we can actually delve into the mathematics before doing this Python implementation. So I promise the next video we'll start going into financial mathematics a little bit more. So until next time, YouTube, see you later.